So now in this video, we're going to look at Lagrange interpolation. So we have the same situation as in the earlier video on uh, interpolation, where you have a set of data points, um, x0 to xn. And of course, associated with it are the y values or the output values, uh, y0, y1 up to yn. Now what we again want to do is the same thing. We want to actually interpolate uh, uh, this uh, data, uh, basically fit a polynomial to this data. Now, Lagrange interpolation starts by first of all defining what are called, we define the cardinal functions. So let's do that. So we define, okay, so we define uh, the cardinal functions L0, L1, Ln, the L comes from Lagrange. Uh, these belong to Pn, which means they are up to an nth order polynomial. Um, they're basically functions that belong to the n space, a po a polynomial n space, and they satisfy the following property that Li xj is equal to the Kronecker delta. Um, you w would have seen this before, I hope. This is known as the Kronecker delta or Kronecker's delta. Okay. And the Kronecker delta basically is uh, has is defined as when these the, uh, this uh, i and this j are equal, then uh, it takes the value one, and when i is not equal to j, it's zero. It has no other value. Okay, so that's very important. That's that's uh, that's a basic property of these cardinal functions. They're defined that way. They're always supposed to take on just these two values. So let's have a look at, now let's actually define these functions um, that will, uh, will be satisfying this particular property. So let's look at those. Okay, so let's look at this. Now, um, basically, uh, in case you're unfamiliar with this, uh, this big pi here, the big pi basically is to multiplication what sigma is to addition. So if you remember this big sigma, Okay, and if we uh, if we say sigma xi i equals zero to n, then what it diff what it means is just x zero plus x one plus and so on up to x n. So it's the sum of these x ter n terms. Now when we say pi from i equals zero to n of xi, then it's the same as just saying x zero times x one times x two times up to x n. So as I said. Um, they are the multiplication, uh, uh, multiplication summation analogs of each other. So here, this means that um, basically there is multiplication going on when we use pi. So essentially, this is saying that this is going to be equal to our first. Uh, so let's just look at a few terms. Well, look at all the terms. Uh, so this is going to be x zero divided by xi minus x0. So this is the first term, okay? And then uh, we'll have the next term, which is going to be x minus x1 over xi minus x1. Now this will continue on. Uh, of course, you will notice here that um, uh, here, as you see, j cannot be equal to i for a reason. If j is equal to i, then you'll have a xi minus xi situation and division by zero. So j cannot be equal to i. So when we reach um, a particular uh, value, uh, and that value in this case would be, for instance, uh, when we reach xi minus one, then of course we have here, that's not a problem. But I just want to demonstrate how we will, in fact, the next value here, we will skip the i, and the next value will be, of course, xi plus 1 over xi minus xi plus 1. So you you can see that we skipped the i, ith value, because when i when j becomes i, it's I mean, it's not allowed to be equal to i. And so this will continue on then. Okay, and which is this. So in this way, we have, uh, that's what this uh, actually expands to. Now you will notice here that when, uh, does the, it's important to check, do these cardinal, uh, the, these cardinal functions, do they fo follow the prime property, the main fundamental property of these functions, which is that um, when the, when this i, and this j are equal, it should be one, otherwise it should be zero. So let's see if we test this as an example, just to make, just to make sure 
uh, and to convince you that these actually do follow that property, let's try an example. So if we were to look at, for instance, an x um, uh, an xi xi situation, an li xi situation, what's going to happen is, as you see these terms, see what will happen. So so this means that you're going to have um, you're going to substitute instead of the x and xi. So this will be xi minus x0 over xi minus x0, which is, so let me write that down for you just so you can see. So that will be xi minus x0 over xi minus x0, which is, of course, they cancel. It's 1. And the next value will be um, xi, I'm sorry, xi minus x1 over xi minus x1 and that'll cancel and of course this will continue the same way till all the values up to the end in, including this in, in uh, value in the middle um, values in all the values so this will be xi minus xn over xi minus xn so all of these will cancel and give you one so this means that when these two indices uh, the value fed here to this function is an xi and this is an li then the result is a 1, which is here actually in this property. So it satisfies that. Now let's try the other one. So the other one is going to be, for instance, an li xj, where i and j are not equal, uh, for instance. Oh, okay, let's actually make it a k. So we make it different from the j there. So, so some uh, i k, where i is not the same as k, what happens in this case? Well, let's have a look. If we look at a few of some of the values, what we're going to end up with is xk minus x0 over uh, xi minus x0. That'll be the first value. Then there'll be other values till we reach the value k. Now, when we reach the value k, what will happen is you will end up with xk minus x0. Uh, oh, sorry, xk. Uh, pardon me, minus, in fact, xk divided by xi minus xk. Now, this is going to be 0. And there's only one of these. The rest will all be there. So you'll have, for instance, here xk minus xn all over xi minus xk. But it's all irrelevant because they're all useless because this one value will become 0. And that will mean that this will all turn out to be equal to zero. So in fact, it does uh, satisfy that property. And so um, uh, just it, that's just to convince you that actually it does satisfy that property. Now, but anyway, this is the um, here. This is the main definition of uh, the Lagrange functions or the cardinal functions for Lagrange interpolation. Um, so let's uh, look at an example. Um, oh, sorry, one more thing before I uh, finish here is uh, we need to look at Okay, so what is the actual polynomial then? So the Lagrange, so the Lagrange form of the interpolating polynomial for the data x i y i from i zero one to n, which means n plus one data points, uh, is basically this. It's p n of x, the nth order polynomial, and it is a summation of i equals zero to n of the l i's, l i of x times y i, where y i of course is the uh, are the data points. So this basically um, is the, the Lagrange um, uh, polynomial, in fact, that interpolates the data. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is let's look at an example then. So we'll do the same. Uh, this is the same example we did in the previous video. Um, so in this case, of course, we have three data points, which means n is equal to 2 again. So we will end up with our polynomial is going to be p2 of x. Okay, so summation i equals 0 to 2 li x into yi. So that will turn out to be equal to, in fact, l1, or sorry, l0 of x, y0, plus l1 of x, y1, plus l2 of x, y2. Now, if you look at our data points, we have, in fact, so p2x turns out to be uh, l0 of x, y0 is 1, so it's just l0 of x plus. Now here, 
look in the data. So uh, y uh, y zero is one, y one is zero, and y two is a half. So that means this uh, middle point, uh, the l one x, will just be multiplied by zero and won't uh, come out. So you'll just be ending up with l two x times um, a half. So so that's our Lagrange uh, inter interpolating polynomial. Now I advise you to always write the polynomial first because if you do have, uh, you're lucky enough to have some output data points that are zero, it would mean that you would have less of these um, uh, uh, cardinal functions to calculate. So in this case, as you can see, we just need to calculate L0 and L2. So let's do that next. So this is a situation we have our counter J equals uh, zero, but since we are looking at L uh, zero of x, um, so therefore i not equal to j, so we'll just skip over and we'll go to j equals one uh, to two of x minus xj over x zero minus xj. So that's going to give us basically x minus x one. So I've skipped the zero because, I mean, there's no need in saying zero to two and then say not equal to zero because, you know, the, the zero over here, as you can see, so I would have had j not equal to zero. So I've already skipped that. So, um, so then I'll end up with x zero minus x one and that will then be multiplied by x minus x two divided by x zero minus x two. Okay. And, uh, uh, that basically means, um, remember, x0, x0 is 0, and uh, x1 is 1, and x2 is 2 thirds uh, from the table. So let's put those values in there. So we end up with x minus x1 means uh, x minus 1, and that's divided by x0 minus x1. So x0 minus x1 will give me minus 1, uh, because um, x0 is 0, x1 is 1. Okay, and of course, then we have that done, and that will be multiplied by x minus x2, and which is 2 thirds, divided by um, x, uh, where is it? Sorry, uh, x0 minus x2. So x0 is 0, minus 2 thirds is just minus 2 thirds. So I end up with uh, this. So we end up with this uh, half into x minus 1 and 3x minus 2. Let's similarly calculate L1. Or sorry, we don't need L1. Let's go directly to L2 of x. And that's equal to uh, j equals 0 to 1, in fact. We'll skip the 2 because it's not allowed. And of course, we have the same thing, except this is now x2 minus xj. And that's then going to be equal to so equal to that, which then turns out to be when we put in the values equal to that, and when we simplify that, simplify that we end up with this. So let's uh, collect all our pieces together. All that remains now is to, in fact, uh, put the polynomial together. We've got our uh, uh, cardinal functions. So therefore, our final polynomial p two of x in this case, the Lagrange polynomial, is going to be uh, l zero. Uh, L0 multiply L0 as it is, so it's um, a half. So now um, we'll open up the brackets there and just expand, and we get this for L0, and then we'll have plus, uh, remember it's got a half multiplier into the L2, which you can see there is in fact negative 9 over 2, okay, and then that's multiplied by, of course, x squared minus x. So when we collect all the terms together, we end up with, in fact, um, 3 over 2, let's write them all down, 3 over 2x squared minus 5 over 2x plus 1 minus 9 over 4x squared, and then you have plus 9 over 4x, which turns out to be minus 3 over 4x squared minus a quarter x plus 1. That's our result. So that's our Lagrange interpolating polynomial. Interestingly, if you compare this to the previous video, you'll discover that this is the same polynomial we got last time, uh, which is interesting. Right, so we'll stop here. Uh, hopefully you have a reasonable idea about Lagrange interpolation. In the next video, we're going to look at um, how we compute errors of Lagrange interpolation. Thank you.